What's going on, y'all? It's me coming at you with another quick post-fight vid. Congrats again to Deontay Bronze Bomber Wilder for retaining his WBC heavyweight crown in his third defense. He beat, uh, he knocked out, devastatingly knocked out Arthur Pen Spilka, the Polish pin, I mean, in, a, in the ninth round. And, you know, props to Spilka, man. He gave a good effort. Um, he pressured Wilder all night long, which I'll get to in a sec. Uh, you know, he took the fight on a five-week notice, so definitely, definitely give props to Spilka, man, because he came in to fight. Um, he gave Wilder some problems, especially when he was giving him angles on his on his right uh, Wilder, you know, he was timing Wilder with some, you know, with some short left hooks, you know, with some right hooks when he was moving into his right, you know, his body fighting angles. So he pretty much set the blueprint on how to beat Deontay Wilder, if you ask me. Because in the first few rounds, um, first few rounds, I gave the, uh, I gave the first few rounds of Spielka because he was pressing, he was pressuring Wilder and Wilder didn't do anything. So his activity level was extremely low because it seemed to me that he was confused. And I'm talking about Deontay Wilder. It seemed like he was very confused and the awkwardness and the southpaw style of Spielka. And as I mentioned again, Spielka was moving so far to his right. He was giving him other angles. He was getting, he was hitting, he was clipping Wilder with those lefts all night long. And the reason behind that is because Wilder keeps his hands extremely low. OK, and that's very, very pr um, prone to a, uh, a knockout artist because knockout artists are so used to their power to the point that they neglect defense. So, I mean, Wilder is going to really have to. I mean, some people say he's still learning, but honestly, this is about his 40th pro fight. <laughs> Just about. I think he needs to. What he's going to have to understand now is that, you know, you can't rely too much on your power to get in phone. It's out of here because, again, it took him nine rounds to get. Spilka out and he kept his hands extremely low, you know, where he made him vulnerable to those counters, uh, made him vulnerable to getting clipped with not only with the left, but also with the rights as well. So, uh, whatnot. So, um, the, you know, the ringside judges, I mean, they had it uh, 70, one, two judges had it 78, 74, 75, 78, 75 for Wilder. And I don't know about that score right there. And this is my opinion, y'all. You, know, you guys can agree or, or disagree with me disagree with me with this i thought spilka was winning this fight up to the uh, up to the ninth round before the knockout but again because like i said he was pressing the action he was pressuring wilder he made he kept i have he kept wild uh wilder um he made wilder go back uh quite often in this fight and you know wilder was hitting uh spilka with some you know good shots uh you know in the fight as well um it just seems like it didn't really bother spilka that much up to the ninth you know to that devastating knockout in the ninth round um but, you know, the knockout occurred when um, Spielka came in wildly with his left and then T Deontay perfectly timed it with that short hook to the right. I mean, right on the chin. Jesus Christ. I mean, it laid Spielka out. And I'm surprised that Spielka wasn't laid out in the coma with that shot because that shot was clean. Wow. Um, but anyhow, um, to the post-fight interview, uh, Tyson Fury interrupts the party. He comes into the ring. <laughs> he came in there and he called Deontay Wilder a bum. Talking about, I'll fight you, your bum. I'll fight you in your backyard. I'll come to America and fight you. And Deontay Wilder said, no, nah, I'll fight you in your backyard, man. This ain't WWE, boy. I'll beat you. I'll, I'll beat you up, boy. This ain't the WWE. I'll take this seriously. He said, come on, you bum. You know, then, you know, Wilder, and then Fury took off his jacket. He was ready to go. He was going to go after Wilder. I mean, I mean, this is what I'm talking about, y'all. This is the action I'm talking about in the heavyweight division, man. It is about to get interesting day after day after day after day. And I'm telling y'all, man, we need to forget about the lower weight classes. And I said this in one of my previous videos, that the lower weight classes is not getting any more attention from me unless they start making the fights happen. Right now, the heavyweight action is where it, where it needs, where it's at right now. All right. And one more thing I got to say before I close this video out. I don't honestly, guys, as much as I want to see this fight happen in April, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Because if you think about it from a business standpoint, and I know I don't like to talk about the business side of boxing, but I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. I think. I think the managers and the promoters behind Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury and uh, Charles Martin, they see a more lucrative opportunity to to cash in and, and make a lot of revenue and money for unifying the titles. I mean, putting um, Deontay Wilder in the fray against Alexander Povetkin is a very, very dangerous fight right now, okay? Um, 
if you think about it, because you know the Charles Martin and uh, Deontay Wilder fight will happen. I I, I honestly think that's going to happen in April. Said the Pavekin fight, and when that does happen, I do expect Wilder to um, take out Martin to KO him, get him out of there in less than five rounds, and then Deontay Wilder becomes a unified um, heavyweight champion. Once that is done, expect the Tyson Fury fight to happen. Now, I know Tyson Fury has a rematch uh, coming up against uh, Vladimir Klitschko, and I don't see Klitschko winning that rematch, to be honest with you. But, hey, I, I've been proven wrong before, but I think that Fury will beat him much more, <laughs> beat him much more worse than what he uh, did to him in the first fight. So um, once those two are able to, to clear those hurdles, we're going to have two unified champions in the heavyweight division, and they're going to be engaging into a super fight. And I'm telling you guys, that is going to be much more, much more uh, uh, entertaining than um, having Wilder going up against Pavekin. I'm being honest with you guys. I re- Again, let's not get it twisted. I want to see the Pavekin fight. I want to see the Wilder fight. But I just don't see it happening right now, given the fact that the, the – the money makers on the business side of things see a golden opportunity to cash in on the you know on two unified champions um, fighting for the undisputed title. So, yeah, man, great night for the heavyweights. Congratulations once again to Prince Charles Martin for knocking out Sars Glaskov, and that was just as when it just as long overdue because Sars Glaskov was getting too many damn gift decisions over fights uh, over Cunningham, Derek Rossi, and of course Malik Scott and. Uh, him pulling out of the Wilder fight to begin with. We can see why Kathy Duva didn't uh, want Glasgow to go in against Wilder um, in the beginning. But, you know, kudos to Charles Martin for, you know, for taking it to Kathy Duva because that's what she gets. She got what she deserved. So, anyhow, once again, congratulations to Deontay Wilder. Very interesting, man. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment below. Share, subscribe, signing off. Peace.